For a little while this morning, I want to share a thought with you from this uh, text in First Peter, simply entitled Harmony in Hostile Territory. Harmony in Hostile Territory. Listen, I want you to, to make note and I want you to commit it, commit it to memory that even when a harmony of faith is not possible, the harmony of love is. That is to say that we may not see eye to eye, but we can love heart to heart. And that really seems to be the dominant dynamic in the Apostle Peter's message to the church here under focus this morning. That even in the midst of a hostile environment, holiness is still expected from the people of God. Uh, in, Peter's, in Peter's mind, that was a message that they, they needed to hear at, at the time of this, this writing because Christians were living uh, in, a, in, a, in a pagan, uh, uh, idol, saturated society where Christianity was being attacked on every on every side. Everywhere they looked there was persecution. Everywhere they looked there was another assault on the people on the people of faith. Christians were being persecuted. They were being literally put uh, to death because of their confession of, of Jesus Christ. They were they were forced from uh, their homes and, and Families were scattered, and they were they were scattered throughout the Roman the Roman providences and the Roman Empire. This this hostile territory and this this toxic environment had them uh, resisting uh, religious temptations that were that were anti-gospel. Having to live in this environment, they found themselves bearing the, the brunt of government sanction uh, brutality against their own people having to, to live in this environment they found themselves fighting the feelings of hatred that are a, that are that will naturally uh, emerge when you find yourself under the boot and under the need of, of oppression they they found themselves in this environment resisting the urge to turn their frustration even inward which would have destroyed the work of the spirit within them individually and the harmony of the spirit throughout them collectively and so Peter realizes that they while they are holding on to their faith they are teetering on the edge of giving up and giving in and doing some things that are anti-gospel and doing some things that work against the, the, the very efforts of the Holy Spirit and so Peter picks up his pen and he writes to them to encourage them to not give up on the faith, to not self-destruct and do things that were contrary to the very gospel that they claimed to profess. Peter encouraged them to keep the faith because although they were experiencing hostility, they still had an obligation to demonstrate the harmony that was found in Christ to a lost world. Listen, before we go too much further, that's a good place for me to remind every child of God, as you said before, that we are in fact still on assignment. You and I, yes, while we are living in a hostile territory, while we are living uh, in, a, in a society where it seems like people of brown skin and black skin have, have targets on their back, while it seems like we find ourselves on the losing end of a seemingly injustice system, we are still on assignment, we are still on a mission even in the face of those who will hate us and attempt to, to execute us and cause us to be extinct. You and I as people of God are still on assignment to share the glory, the grace, and the mercy of God with the lost in a dying world. And to that, to that, Peter tells the church in verse number 8 of 1 Peter 3, he tells them to sum up, he says, all of you be Harmonious. Now it's very important for us to understand that Peter is not talking to the world. It's important for us to understand that Peter is talking to the church. He's talking to people that belong to Christ, people that belong to God, people who are supposed to have the Holy Spirit and be covered by the blood of the Lamb, the called out. That's who Peter is talking to here. And Peter tells the 
church, he tells the people of God, all of you be harmonious. Now listen, before I get carried away here, I need everybody to understand a little three little word there that often overlooked, praise the Lord, in our times today. Peter does not just say you be harmonious or a select for you of you be harmonious. He says, no, if there's going to be harmony, if there's going to be peace, if the word of God is going to be good, to go forth, all of you must be people of harmony. Now, the reason that's significant is because we live in a day and time that many of us are of African-American descent and those of us in our African-American experience have often found ourselves being the one who, who have, have, have been put upon us to be harmonious while we have to live with and live under the oppression and the attack of others. But I'm here to help everybody under the sound of my voice to understand that if there is going to be harmony, everybody has to have a commitment to harmony. It cannot just be that those who are victimized, and it cannot be that just those who are victimized and those who are oppressed got to be calm and be cool and, and have a right heart and have a right spirit. At some point, even those who, who have blood on their hands, the, the oppressor of the people has to be a person who is of harmony, even those who do the harm have to at some point be people of harmony if there is going to be peace. Peter says everybody, whether you are the persecuted or whether you are on the receiving end of the persecution, everybody has an obligation. Everybody has a part to play in having a heart that demonstrates yeah. harmony. He says all of you be harmonious. This idea of harmonious, it carries the idea of being one-minded and living in kinship and living in togetherness. It cannot be that, that one is living with a hostile spirit and somebody else is living with a harmonious spirit. Everyone must live in a one mind with the spirit of kinship and togetherness. And listen, we're ought to, we ought to jump out of the page, we ought to leap from the page from the, from the very jump uh, is that is that harmony is in fact attainable and definable. Now the reason, the reason that, that may not make, make much significance to you right now, but the reason that is significant is because if you're like me, you, you look at what you look at the condition that our world is in. And when you when you really listen to people's heart and you hear some of the hatred and some of the hostility that's in people's heart, it makes you wonder if it is in fact even possible, come on somebody, for there to actually be harmony in the land when we look at how we treat each other and how deeply seated our hate and hostility is for one another, it can make you feel as though actual harmony is a hopeless ideal. But Peter says here that harmony is in fact attainable and it can be defined. It is something that you can experience and it is something that you can identify when you see it. He says, be people who are harmonious. He says, it's not just, it's not just an idea or an aspiration. It is actually a level of community that can be attained. But it can only be attained when everybody in the community is committed to harmony. And the message to the church today is that while we have our difficulties and while we have our, our deep-seated hurts and while we have our frustrations with one another, let me get specific here. I'm talking about among the white and black churches of Christ in particular. If the truth were told, there's a lot of hate and there's a lot of frustration that takes place. There is a lot of hostility that still exists because some of us who are still alive today can remember when black folk had to worship in the balcony. With the black preacher, when the black preacher came to town and the black folk in the in the city wanted to come hear the black preacher, they could come, but they had to they had to sit in the back when they couldn't sit. Y'all are talking back to me. I'm talking about back in the day when, when our choruses could come in to, to the church and, and sing to entertain the white the white members, but they had to come in through the back door. And if they were gonna feed them something, they had to eat it outside. Y'all are talking back. That there's this hostility, there is Frustration, there is anger that exists in me. We cannot 
deny that we cannot pretend that it does not exist. But the preaching point there is that while we have those difficulties and while there is that frustration, while there are those hurts, while some of us who are in the body of Christ have been called the inward by our brothers and sisters in Christ. While we have been denied employment opportunities by our own brothers and sisters in Christ. Come on, somebody. Uh, 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 while we find ourselves uh, disenfranchised many times at the hands of our own brothers and sisters in Christ, while we have those frustrations, harmony is in fact a place that we can all get to when we have a mutual commitment to harmony in the body of Christ. Peter goes on to say they are to, to be sympathetic with one another. They are to be compassionate with one another. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about that because we just wrapped up a series on having compassion. But I just need to tell you here quickly that it carries the idea this word here of being more concerned with the needs of our brothers and our sisters in this context. That's what it means to be more concerned with the needs of our of our brothers and sisters than our own needs. It's a matter. It's a matter. Really, when you look at the, if you wanted a, a, a image of what it means to have compassion, it it is to to, to to accompany someone to come alongside them in their suffering. It means it means to have to 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 to, to, to have feeling with others. It, it carries the idea of walking alongside them in their distress and, and sharing in their, in their difficulties. It's a matter of reflecting, watch this now, of reflecting and understanding another person's circumstances from your own point of view. I mean, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good place to, to pause right there and, and suggest to you as we talk about sympathy. Again, we're not talking about empathy. Empathy is when you attempt to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Sympathy is when you try to connect from your own point of view and perspective. Let me, let me, let me pause right there. And let me ruffle, ruffle some feathers and suggest to you that as we talk about reconciliation and becoming one and experiencing some harmony, that as we, is, is that if the Lord brings us to a place where we can actually begin to have some conversations with one another, one of the worst things you can do is tell somebody that you understand how they feel. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one of the worst, come on somebody. I heard you at, at, at home saying amen right here through there. That's a, that's a good place to tell you that. Uh, one of the worst things that you can do is tell somebody that you know how they feel or what they're going through. It might not be that significant. Because oftentimes, and, and many times we have good intentions. But sometimes in our attempt to connect with other people, we make their issue about us instead of them. What the, come on. <laughs> One of the worst things I can do, or you can do, is if I come to you with my concern and my stress, you make it more about you than me. We have, we have to, be, to, be, to be careful about that. When we, when, 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 when we try, to, when we try to, to have harmony, it's not always a matter of trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Sometimes you just need to stay in your own shoes and try to identify and connect the best you can because of some things you will never understand. Come on, can I, can I put this in context of 2020? My, my black skin. There, there, there is some stuff that unless you are a young, black, African-American man, you will never understand. There are experiences that I have with my sons and my daughters that you will never understand. There are, there are thoughts that go through my head that you cannot understand. There, there are experiences that you will never be able to identify with. And so the object is not to identify and empathize it is simply to sympathize from your own perspective. Are oh, you understand? That makes any kind of sense what's, what's, what's whatsoever. And so, and so we have to we have to be careful 
as we seek to, to, to develop a sense of harmony and unity with the Lord, gives us to that point to, 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 to not make other people's issues about, are you understanding? About us or about you. Try to connect to them from your own perspective and your own, you know, it's like one of the <laughs> Probably need to probably need to mute this right here. One of the worst things that can happen is when you start talking to somebody that don't look like you, and then they try to start talking like you, <laughs> acting like you, yeah. and talking like they actually know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm not ta I'm not talking to you, so you can identify with what I'm talking about. I'm I'm talk I'm sharing with you so you can know. What I'm talking about. Are you understanding what? Okay, I, I gotta I gotta move on. Y'all not looking at me. Y'all not looking at me. Then Peter tells, he tells the church, he tells them to not only have sympathy, but he tells them to be brotherly. That is to simply say, treat each other in light of the family of God that you belong to. That's what he's saying contextually there. Treat each other like you know you belong to the same family of God. It means you need to love another as, a, as one who was birthed from the same womb. It's a command to pursue unity, realizing that there is, in fact, a common origin. There is, in fact, a common ancestry to understand that there is, in fact, a common Bloodline, just like you and I, it doesn't matter what hue you are, if I cut you, you're going to bleed the same looking blood. Mm -hmm. The reality is, all of us came from two folks. Amen, if you believe what the Bible says. Say amen if you can. All right. And so, so, so the idea here is that we all come from a common a common ancestry, we come from a common origin, we come from a common bloodline in the same way that we all have the same blood running through our veins. We are covered by the same blood and have the same spirit living in our hearts and we ought to attempt to relate to one another and establish relationship with one another in that way, realizing and recognizing that we're covered by the same blood and that the same spirit is tabernacling with all of us. And so when I see you, I ought not see my white brother or my white sister. I ought not see the, my, my, my brother from the south part of town or the north part of town. What I ought to see is my brother or my sister that's covered by the blood and possessed by the spirit. Peter goes on to say, I'm trying to hurry. He says, he says, he says, don't just be brotherly, but he says, be kind-hearted. Much like the command to be sympathetic, this word means to be tender-hearted. It means to, to move with tenderness, to, to, to have a sense or a spirit of self-denial about you when you respond to the pain and the suffering that other people are experiencing. Now, listen, I won't bother to go into all, to all of the nuances there, but what's interesting there is that Peter chooses to, in the same little paragraph, in the same sentence, Peter uses two terms to describe fundamentally the same thing. And if you ask me, I, it, it suggests that Peter realized that 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 uh, that uh, that that we don't just need we don't just need um, compassion. We need a double portion of compassion. In other words, if there's one thing that the church needs some of and some more of, it's compassion in how we relate to one another. The only thing that allows a person to turn their head when they see injustice, the only thing that allows a person to turn their head when they see the suffering of their own brothers and sisters, the only thing that allows a person to be satisfied and content when there is stress and strain in relationships between him and his own brothers and his own sisters is a lack of compassion. For one another. And so he said there, are, there, there really needs to be a double portion of compassion. And finally, as he wraps up verse number eight, he says, he tells them, he tells them, listen, you gotta, you gotta be humble in spirit. 
In another way, Peter says, Peter says, don't think too much of yourself. <laughs> if, I had, if I had a little more time, Brother Hodge, I'd tell us that some of our problems, some of, the reason some of us can't have harmony, the reason we can't experience harmony in the body of Christ in our own fellowship is because we think too much of ourselves. But Peter says, listen, don't think so much of yourself. Don't take yourself so seriously. Have a courteous attitude toward your brothers and sisters. Serve them and, and put others ahead of yourself. Listen, that's a good place to tell you that. There can never be harmony as long as everybody's putting themselves first. As at, at some point, somebody's got to put somebody else ahead of themselves. Listen, that, that's, let, me, let, me, let me just make that... Let me make that, 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 that real. Uh, don't quote me on this. But, but in human nature, my understanding of human nature helps me to know and believe that in many cases, and y'all forgive me if I'm being too raw, but the truth is, the reason so many of our brothers and sisters that don't look like us are so comfortable say, staying quiet and not speaking up with regard to the injustice that they see right in front of their face it's because they're more concerned about their own self-interest. More concerned about their own self-interest in preserving self-interest and maintaining a status quo that works for them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that they would rather be quiet and look the other way. But Peter says, listen, you got to have some humility in your spirit. And by that, that means you got to learn to put other people ahead of yourself. The reason that, that there's such a challenge with us experiencing harmony in the body of Christ is because everybody wants to be number one, whether we realize it or not. And so Peter, Peter says, "Listen, you gotta, you gotta put some, you gotta put your brothers and sisters ahead of self." And I'm here to tell those who are willing to hear it that as people of God, you have to learn to put, let me, let me just put it a different way. Those people of God who are in positions to do something about the injustice that they see. The injustice that victimizes their own people. People in their own family room just talking about that same blood, same spirit. Have to be willing to put their own needs aside and their own interests aside for the sake of there being harmony within the body of Christ. It's hard, it's hard for me to, to have harmony with you. When, when I know that you've got your hands in your pocket when you could put them out to help me. It's hard, it's hard to have harmony. It's hard, it's hard to sing kumbaya. <laughs> when you've got your hands in your pocket instead of extending to help. Who says you've got to have a, a humble spirit, a, a, a loneliness. Don't think so much of yourself. Put somebody else first. And then finally, I, I gotta get out of here. Realizing that the desire to get even is woven into our human instinct. It's hardwired into our psyche when somebody hurts us. Peter says that if there's going to be harmony, he says in verse number 9, he says, don't return evil for evil. So don't return evil for evil or insult for insult.
but giving a blessing instead. Listen, I gotta hurry. The verb tense here suggests, I won't elaborate on it, but it suggests that they were already going tit for tat. <laughs> In other words, Peter has to add verse 9 because the people were already retaliating against. Come on, are you understanding what I In other words, they were already setting buildings on fire. Y'all ain't talking back to me. They were already looting the stores downtown. Are you understanding what I'm saying? They were, they, they, they were, they were already uh, 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 throwing, throwing uh, cocktails at the police and throwing rocks at the police. And Peter says, don't return evil for evil. Or insult for insult. But giving a blessing instead. Again, Peter tells them, stop retaliating in that way and compose yourself because repaying evil for evil as much as we hate it is anti-gospel and works against the efforts of the Holy Spirit. Now listen, if I can get practical here for a minute, I tell you that instead of retaliating with an insult, Somebody will say, well, man, if I can't retaliate with an insult, what can I do? I mean, what, what, what's left if I can't throw a rock back when somebody throw a rock at me? What? If, I, if, if, I, if, I can't, if I can't give them some hate speech back when they give me some hate, what, 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 how can I retaliate? If I can get practical, I tell you that instead of, of retaliating with an insult, Give a rebuttal using the truth. What am, what am, what am I getting at there? I suggest to you that, that harmony can only be introduced. And harmony can only be maintained. It can only be sustained when there is a confrontation with the truth. As long as we're just hurling insults at each other, all we're doing is feeding the fire, we're escalating the problem. But, but, but if we can ever sit down and talk about the truth, then we can begin to introduce some harmony into the atmosphere. What am I talking about when I talk about truth? I'm talking about a conversation about truth with regard to how you have treated me yeah. and how I've treated you. Listen, we can't, we can't get you a place of harmony if we pretend like you haven't hurt me. And, and I pretend like I haven't hurt you. At some point, there has to be an acknowledgement of the truth. There has to be an acknowledgement, I don't understand what I'm saying, an acknowledgement of what has transpired. There has to be an acknowledgement of the fact that you have hurt me, I have hurt you perhaps, and that the pain is real. There has to be a conversation about that. But then there has to be a conversation about not just the pain that we have afflicted, we're inflicted, or let me put it this way, that if there cannot just be a conversation about the affliction of the pain. There has to be a conversation at some point about the aspirations of the gospel. What do I mean by that? Yeah, we need to talk about what we've done to one another. But then we need to have a talk about what Christ has done for us. There needs to be a talk about the truth that hurts. Then there needs to be a conversation about the truth that heals. And the truth that saves. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is to say that if, 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 if there's going to be a change, it's going to be because 
the gospel of Jesus Christ puts us all on the same place. You know, this is the thing about the gospel. I'm, I'm going to hurry up. I'm, I'm, I'm done. This is the thing about the gospel. The gospel has got to make everybody get quiet. That don't mean come up yet. I see y'all looking. That ain't what that means. I'll tell you when to come up. It's the inside thing. you got to be here to, to, to get up. They're trying to figure out if it's time to come up and start singing. It's uh, not time to start singing. Not just yet. But, but this, this is why you have to include the gospel in the conversation. Because the gospel makes everybody shut up and be quiet. Because everybody is on the same playing field when we hold our lives and our actions up to the gospel. Because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And so instead of, of, of retaliation, we're commanded in the second part of verse 9 to extend a blessing and forgiveness uh, that God first gave us. Peter says it like this. He says this in the second part of verse number 9. He says, for you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Listen, that is to say that we are called to bless others because we have been made both a blesser and a blessing ourselves. And listen, and part of, watch this. This is the part I, I don't want us to miss because this is the part we like to skip over so we can get to the kumbaya. Part of being the blesser and the blessing includes forgiving the excusable because God has forgiven the excusable in us. But watch this. Forgiving the excusable does not mean excusing the excusable. See, we rush to forgiveness and skip over the accountability. I mean, isn't this isn't that our natural reason? Let's, let's hurry up and make this feel good. Let's, let's, let's hurry up and get to where we're feeling better. Yes, we have to forgive the inexcusable. But we don't necessarily excuse the inexcusable. That means that there's going to be harmony and reconciliation if there. There's going to be a healthy relationship. We've got to talk about what you did. So it does not mean excusing the excusable. I mean, uh, 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 it does not mean excusing the inexcusable. It does mean how we're forgiving the inexcusable and there's a difference. In other words, this is not simply a matter of praying and hugging it out. Like nothing happened. And as if there's no work to do or no growth that needs to take place. Being a blessing means speaking to and, and acting with regard to a, to a person's highest good. In other words, I mean, let me just let me just say it like this. It's a matter of bringing out the best in another person. And sometimes you can't bring out the best in a person without a confrontation. You sometimes you can't bring out the best without there being a level of discomfort. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there, 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 can, there can be there can be no 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 there can be no growth without first being broken and stretched in places that need to be broken and stretched in places where we need to be challenged. And so and so being a blessing, I'm done. I'm done. Y'all can't ask me to come up here now. Uh, being, a <laughs> being a blessing don't just mean hugging it out. It means having a real conversation that challenges growth and encourages a change of behavior. And, and listen, this is what God says. God says when you do that, he says, we in her inherit a blessing. When we treat our enemies with the, with the spirit that God treats us with, we inherit a blessing ourselves. And so I encourage you, as I go to my seat, uh, that when we respond with hate, and I'm talking to the people of God, 
God this morning. When we respond with hate, we risk forfeiting our own inheritance in the process of fighting our, our enemy. I know we are uh, living in a day and time when we 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 want to get even and we want to get back and we want to do it now. And while that anger and that frustration is legitimate, and in many cases is righteous anger and frustration, Peter is helping us understand here that if there's going to be harmony in the body and if there's going to be harmony in the land. We've got to be sympathetic toward one another. Everybody's got to be committed to harmony. There's got to be some brotherly love. There's got to be some compassion. Somebody's got to put somebody else first. We've got to make up our minds that we're going to to not just gloss over this thing and have a kumbaya moment, but we're going to get serious and we're going to be confrontational with one another in the spirit of love for the purpose of greater harmony and unity with one another. But it's going to take every, every child of God doing their part, doing the hard work themselves to be an instrument that can be used by God to bring about the change that this country is begging to see. Legislation won't do it. Laws alone won't do it. Policy changes won't do it. Elections by themselves won't do it. There's got to be a change of heart. And that change of heart's got to be introduced by the people who possess the heart of God, the people of God. But you got to make sure your heart is right. You gotta make sure that your heart is in the right place. That God can use you as an instrument to bring the Lord in his honor. Listen, that's gonna be my prayer for you this week. That as you pray, God will give you a sense of healing, a sense of renewal that needs to take place in your heart. And I'm talking to somebody, if you've got some hate in your heart and some hostility, and you really don't know what to do with it, hand it over to God. Say, Lord, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do with this, but I'm handing it over to you. I know this, this hatred, this is not of you. This is not of you. This is not of your spirit. Father, I give it to you. Because I know I can't see you in peace if I'm not at peace in my heart with my brother. There may be somebody here who is not in a relationship with the Lord at all. We invite you to him. We invite you to save your relationship with him. Believe with all of your heart that Jesus lived, suffered, and died for you. That he died so that you might live. Believe that he was buried in the borrowed tomb, got up the third day with all power, say it. Now raised the rule with the right hand of God the Father. Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is who he is, that's the Son of God. Acknowledge that he died for you. Change your mind. Change your attitude about the way you've been living. Make up your mind like you never have before. You're going to live right and you're going to live for God. And be baptized today in water for the permanent rolling back, the permanent removal of all past sin. When you do that, the Spirit of the Lord will tabernacle with you. And it is that Spirit, the Spirit of God, will empower you and enable you to live the harmonious life that the Lord has called you to live. That's our prayer for you. There may be somebody here you or somebody watching you just you need prayer. Leave a comment you want to pray.